Yes, God. Well, on today, I'm taking a chill pill and being still, but you are still going to be in good hands. The last time this woman of God was up, she just rocked the house and, and just knocked the ball all out the park. None other than my wife, Pastor Kim Taylor, is bringing the word on today. I am so excited. I'm so excited. She's been studying and knocking down the dough and closing the dough and in the book and through the computer. And she's been getting herself ready for today. And I know there is a word in her mouth for such a time as this. Everybody that got two feet, if you can, and please stand on your feet. Everybody, because we are going to bring in the woman of God with the word of God for the people of God. Now, when I bring up I want y'all to make some Holy Ghost noise we are bringing all the way from California by way of Peoria I bring to the platform pulpit today our very own pastor Kim Taylor God is good, and all the time. Whew. Would you guys just get in God's presence for me? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. See, the presence of the Lord should have already been at your house. And each of you bring a piece of what God has already done for you. And as you come into the house of God, you encourage someone else that may not have had what you had. You bring in and you usher in what the Holy Spirit has given you. Even if it's a measure of a mustard seed, God has given you enough so that when you get here, you can just continually praise him and my strength that I have will give up to you and be an igniting fire into you for where you lack so that when you are able, when you are able to go forth, I can go forth for you. So come on, go forth for the one that's having a hard time. That's it. Because God is the only one who can answer and give you what you need for this time and this season. I only can help get you there. And as I get you there, we're going to push each other through, through the door of his miracle and what you need for today. So give God a high praise. Hallelujah. 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 Anyhow. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Even if I ain't got the answer yet. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Even if I don't feel it. Hallelujah. From the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. I give you praise. Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. I give honor to God who continually is my father. He's the one who gives me comfort. He's the one who has strengthened me. He's the one who has carried me. We all have issues. We all have things that we're going through. And I feel it. 
as your first lady, some of you will text me. And it's a burden, but it's not a heavy burden that I don't carry with you. Know that your texts carry weight. If you don't call me, know that your text is being reached and I'm praying with you. And I'm there with you in the spirit. And I hope that you are praying for me too. He's constantly reminding me that I can't do this by myself. This road of seeking and going forth to be righteous, just to look and just be who God called me to be, not just first lady, but to be me, to be someone that God sees through me, that I can be his hands, his feet, and his mouthpiece, and that you see that in me. Amen. And then I give honor to God for you, for all of our leaders, for all of our ministers, pastors, and all of you parishioners that are here today. To our musicians, thank you. To our back end team, thank you. To everyone who upholds this ministry, we are grateful to you. There is no small deed that you do here at Restoration Life that we are not grateful for. And we're thankful for every bit. Doesn't matter what you give, even if it's a dollar to God, to God be the glory. The dollar will be able to be a gift to you as well as seed, to be able to have seed more seed on next occasion and then I give honor to the man of my life my husband my friend the one who pastors me too and gives me what I need for this season let's go to the word of God everybody's standing as we honor the word you stand in honor of who he is and what the word is, which is power, which is that what feeds you, which is that what gives you strength, that what is the, the go-to when there's nobody else around. We give honor to the word of God. Every child, would you stand? Every child, we want you standing. We gotta teach the children that there's respect and honor on the word of God. Amen. And so we want to make sure that every child is reared in the, in the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to Amos. Amen. Chapter 9. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Verse 13. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my Amos chapter 9. Verse 13. For there is a prophetic word today. It's a prophetic word because God was talking to me and he was sharing how much of what we've been through and he's going to reveal it today for you today. Everyone's got it? Yeah. I want us to read it together in concert. We have it up on the screen so the, for those that forgot your Bible, <laughs> we want to make it a habit to have your um, book Bible to bring with you at church because sometimes technology can go away and sometimes technology is a distraction and so if you have the Bible book Bible in front of you you're able to just stay focused and so we're gonna make it a habit so if you got a actual book Bible I want y'all to open it up don't just sit it on the chair and look pretty and act like, ooh, I'm somebody because I brought my Bible. Amen. Listen. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let's read this together loudly and with emphasis. Amen? Amen. Come on. Jesus' name, amen. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt we're gonna read it one more time and this time i want you to read it because you know something is coming 
Come on, in the name of Jesus. Behold, days have come, said the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. Pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that your word is constant in us and that your word today, God, will go forth. I put myself aside and that you, Lord God, will be a sounding voice to those who need a word today. Father, those that need an answer, that you would answer today. Father, those that need a touch from you, Father, that they would be touched, healed, delivered, and set free. For we rebuke everything that tries to come to kill, steal, and destroy. For we know, Lord God, that every word that goes forth is seed, and that it will grab root in its time, and that the enemy will not take it from us. And that we will have, Lord God, even that much more in the name of Jesus. Speak through me and let your Holy Spirit, Father God, be a sounding voice to those that hear us far and near. In the name of Jesus. And everyone says, Amen. now give God a high praise. Amen. Give it to God. Give it to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. For my scripture, for my title today, God gave me, it's harvest season. But how much work have you put in? Before I go forth, I want to acknowledge um, those that went through the hurricane, those that are dealing with loss. I'm on a Facebook page with first ladies all over the country, and there are several churches that lost their church trees on top of churches, properties just blew away. So we want to continually pray for those that weren't able to gather today and that they would be that God would restore to them a hundredfold for what they've lost in the name of Jesus. So as we, it's harvest season, it's harvest season. The harvest season is a time of celebration and gratitude, representing the culmination of hard work and the abundance of blessings. In the Bible, the concept of harvest is not only associated with crops, but it also holds spiritual significance. The harvesting is the most labor-intensive activity of the growing season. That's why it said, that's why I said, how much work have you put in for your harvest? I purposely love the book of Ruth, and God took me to the book of Ruth, and I saw something different than I normally see. We know Ruth, where she met Boaz, and Boaz, the whole story is about how she ended up receiving, and she ended up in a place where now she's in abundance. But what did it take for her to get there? Ruth in chapter 2, if you read it very well and read it again and let the Holy Spirit speak to you, Ruth herself proposed and suggested to go glean behind the reapers. Naomi didn't tell her, I want you to go over there. No, she went on her own merit and said, you know what, I think I need to go to the place where I need to make sure that we have something. And notice she said, we. She didn't go work for herself. This wasn't a selfish move. This was something that she knew Naomi needed as well. And she was like, okay, I gotta go out there and get us something. So let me go to a place that's already set and it's harvest season. 
Let me go to a place where people are already getting what they need and see if there's extra for me. She knew that she couldn't harvest because she didn't put in that work. But she was willing to work for what she needed. That's B clause of what Ruth was going through. Uh -huh. God showed Ruth favor because I believe in my opinion that she worked very hard for what, God, what, she, what she worked for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ruth was then blessed by the owner of the field, who is Boaz, and she affirmed him uh -huh. and blessed him and asked for more, but she did it with respect. There was respect, there was honor. She was not in there saying, I need you to give me because I'm hungry and I need what I need. No, she was like, I humbly come before you as the owner of this field because I'm in need. And she said, it's not just for me, it's for my sister, my mother-in-law, someone who has reared me, who has taken me in and I need more and I need from you. Another favor God given to Ruth is she sat and she ate with the harvesters. She sat at the table with the harvesters. I never paid attention to that until I saw, I was like, do you know what it costs for someone to sit at a harvest table? He said, you can sit here and I don't want nobody to say nothing to her. He warned everybody. He's like, look, don't make yourself better than she is because she's just working just as hard and I don't want you to say nothing to her because she's going to get what she needs. God is speaking to all of us and he's saying he's going to sit you in places that you did not even expect to be and you didn't even work to get there but because the favor of God that is on you and for the work that you put in for yourself and for your family and for restoration life for all of you that are working for the for the kingdom God is saying I'm going to put you in tables and in offices and in buildings and in positions that you never even thought of or dreamed of and I want you to say I'm gonna sit with the harvesters in Jesus name So it was evident in verse 17 of chapter 2, when she threshed barley, she gathered until, until the evening. Uh -huh. She stayed all day until all night, which says that she stayed beyond the time even the harvesters left. Yeah. How much work have you put in yeah. yourself for what God has given you in this time? So she acquired, and it's important that they put in the scripture that she acquired 30 pounds when she did that. She worked all day and through the night, and she acquired 30 pounds. But in chapter 3, Ruth received three times more than she had gleaned days before, and she didn't even have to work for it. Because if you read it, it says, Boaz, who found favor with her, it says it in verse 15, he poured out six measures of barley into her scarf, which is 75 pounds. He gave her three times more than what she needed. He, she didn't even ask for it, you guys. And because of the favor of God that was on her, Boaz, who is the owner of the field. Now, he wasn't the harvester. He was the owner of the field. See, you don't even realize God's going to connect you to the owners of some fields. 
just the manager, not just the, C, uh, the vice president, the senior vice president. He's going to connect you to the owner, and the owner is going to see what you have done. And the owner is going to say, listen, because you have, I don't know what it is upon you, but just gonna bless you or I'm just gonna promote you or I'm just gonna give you what is what I can give you because I see something in you but see it's 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 it's, it's all max it ties back to how much work have you put in don't get that part because we all shout and we are great and we are grateful for all that and we're awesome that God's going to bless us it's awesome but can you tie that to where God ha what have you done with what God has blessed you with I have to give a short testimony because this ties into the story of Ruth so Angel, I don't want to put you out there, but with your permission, I'm going to share part of her testimony. So for Women's Conference, we gave out bracelets. And the bracelet is my sister's uh, motto before she died. And it's, it's the, the acronym, is, she used to call herself, I'm an island girl. Because she used to say, I shall live and not die. That was the acronym, I shall live and not die, island. So if for those women that went to the conference and your bracelet is still sitting in there nicely wrapped and packed, you better take it out. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Elder Donna, she has hers on right now. It was meant for ministry, which her son did it in her name. My nephew did it in her name. So after she passed, he's like, I still want to carry on that legacy for my mother. Because he still believes that if you believe in yourself that I shall live and not die, God's still going to bless you and he's going to give you what you need for your healing. And he's still going to be the healer. Now my sister is living, but she's living in heaven. Where she needs to be in this season. So as time has gone on, Sister Angel works for the public and she has her bracelet on. And people have been asking about the bracelet. She could easily said, oh, it's just a bracelet and went on and served them. But she served in the public capacity as well as in ministry. That's right, that's right, that's right. She didn't stop there. She kept on and she prayed with the people. This is a bracelet. It's, it stands for, I shall live and not die. There's a scripture tied to it. She quotes the scripture and she says, we are declaring this together for your healing or whatever you need. And she has ministered not to one, not to two, not to three, but more for five people. She's working the ministry that God has given her through a bracelet. The seed God gave her to be able to go forward and do what God has called her to do. And little does she know that that is ministry. You don't have to be in the four walls of the church to minister to someone. You don't have to be here singing here. You can sing outside and just be singing and someone will catch it and be able to be delivered. You can preach in the street and someone will hear it and be delivered. <laughs> It's not your job where you work is not for you to just be able to get money. It's for you to be God's hands, his feet, his eyes, his mouthpiece. It's 
so that you are, can be connected to the Holy Spirit. See, the same way you come to come to church, that you get prepared and you're ready to come and serve and worship and you're here to give God praise and glory, you should have that same, same fervor when you go to work. Listen, I don't want to deal with so-and-so who getting on my nerves today, so I'm going to get myself prepared because I never know. You may have to minister to so-and-so. How do you know if God's not making so-and-so to get on your nerves so you can turn it around and be a witness to that person? Now, this does not go with saying for the ones that have tried and they not listening. That's a different story. But if you ignore it and just be like, oh, they get on my nerves, I'm just going to avoid that person and keep walking. Uh-uh, no. It happened to me. It happened to me once before. Because when we get in the position of doing God's work, God will favor you so that you don't even think about what's going around. And then you just see through them and you say, you know what? Can I talk to you real quick? It's a matter of using what, God, what gift God has given you. And I want you to be sure that when you get to your harvest season, that you know how much work you've put in and that God will give you back what you have put in. Amen. Pastor spoke in the last week, what's been held up is going to hit your life. The blessings you've been praying for, God will bless you when you're in the right place. That's it. Because you're making a switch. Right. Come on. Come on. So your harvest may not be where you sow. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Ruth was in her place, so things fell into place. But think about it. Ruth and Naomi left what they used to to go somewhere else. So she received her harvest somewhere else. Even though somewhere else she was working somewhere else, but she had fully put in all the work of supporting Naomi and being behind Naomi. And then when she got to the other side, Naomi was her source. But then she went to the other side and said, wait a minute, I need to give back to Naomi everything that she gave me. So I'm going to be her source and I'm not going to leave her in the dust. So God was saying to her, oh, see, you don't never know where you are that you're going to be used by God to be able to bless someone else. Your harvest is not just for you. Your harvest is to bless someone else. So if you get in the, in the spirit of, ooh, I'm blessed and I'm going to get all, that's why ain't none of us won the lottery. And I'm saying the truth. Because what's the first thing that comes out your mind when you say, I'm going to get win the lottery? I'm paying off bills. Did not first thing, I know, please don't be honest. You did not say, I'm going to give 10% to the Lord. No, the first thing you writing it down, you're like, ooh, I'm going to pay this off. I'm going to pay that off. Ooh, I'm going to buy this. Ooh, I'm going to buy that. Some of y'all pay more tithes into the lottery than you do at church. And then you wonder why God only get blessed you with a $20 check when pastor be preaching and saying, prophesying, ooh, there's going to be checks in the mail. And you get a check and it's only $25. You look at it like, ugh. Wait a minute. What about the seed? Ooh, that's $25 I didn't think of. Let me sow it back into the kingdom and see how God's going to multiply it. Hosea 10 and 12 says, sow for yourself righteousness, reap steadfast love, break up your follow ground. He's saying your follow ground, for it is the time to seek the Lord that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. So it is our responsibility, it's our do right to make sure that we are seeking righteousness when we're sowing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If whatever you're doing, if you're doing it righteously, God's going to bless you. 
if you're not doing it, if you're not doing it for self gain, if you're not doing it to see what you're going to get, it's with a pure heart. When you do it with a pure heart, God says, I'm going to bless you and give you things and even places and take you places you've never seen. That scripture, Hosea urges the people to sow righteousness and reap steadfast love, emphasizing the importance of cultivating a close relationship with God. He encourages to seek the Lord during the harvest season, acknowledging that it is the perfect time to experience his abundant blessings. So when we, re we are in the harvest season, if you ever, I was telling pastor when we were driving down um, and where all the corn stalks are and all the fields, and I said, some of them were already harvested. Some of them, there still need some harvest. And I was like, that, they still have some stuff. The harvest is still some ready to be released. There's some stuff out there that God has, like Pastor said, is held up because he needs some people to come and work and get what you need. It's there. It's there, but it's time for you to get yourself together. So what is righteousness? It's the acting in accord with divine and moral law, portraying or representing God. So if you're representing the divine and you re reap steadfast love, which is who he is, and you become God's desires of what he wants from you. Leviticus 26 and 4 says, God promised the Israelites, I will send you rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops and the trees in their fruit. This verse illustrates God's fullness faithfulness in providing for his people's physical needs during harvest time. So assuring them that obedience to his commandments would result in abundance and prosperity. Have you been obedient? Where are you on the obedience scale? I'm only talking about you. I'm not talking about your spouse. I'm not talking about what you've done in this and that and the other. I'm talking about you personally. Because God says sometimes he does it to me. He's like, I didn't ask you to do all of that. I just asked you to sit in my presence for a few minutes. Have you done that? Because in his presence is fullness of joy. And is his presence, it, you come down, you come down your mountain so that he can be elevated. Because once we continue to do what God has called us to do, we keep puffing ourselves up. We keep elevating ourselves up. You keep doing everything that he called you to do, but then you end up in works. God doesn't acknowledge works. You get busy doing, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to busy, get busy, busy, busy. I'm going to be the pastor. I'm going to be the associate. I'm going to be the minister. I'm going to be the PMT. I'm going to be the sound person. Oh, I got to be there. Oh, I got to be there. But did you get in his presence before you got here? All he asks is acknowledge me first. Acknowledge me first in all your ways. All your ways. Everything you do before you do anything, acknowledge him first. If we get too busy, oh, I keep waking up too late. Well, wake up early so you can get in the presence of God. Oh, I keep running myself, then, and I got to pray to God in the car. He's, uh, that's great, but you're still distracted because you're driving. He takes the little bit and he says, okay, you're giving me this much, thank you, but I don't want this much. Your harvest is predicated on how much time you've given to God, not how much of what you've done of what you're doing and the gifts. So where are you in the obedience scale? That would cause God to send a rain for your season of harvest. Because I don't want just a drizzle. I don't want just a sprinkle. I want a deluge. I want some rain that's going to come down and it's going to pour into me 
that I will have room enough to receive and that it's going to overflow so that I can give to you. Because when you have overflow, you're able to give to someone else. Ruth was obedient to every instruction by her mother-in-law before she got to Boaz. She was obedient to every command and every instruction given to her by Boaz. She was obedient to and responded in respect and honor. As evident in the word, she received more than she even anticipated because she was obedient to everything they told her to do. Never did she question. Never did she say, well, how about if I do it this way? Never did she say, well, why are you giving it to me that way? She just said, yes, I will. She did it and she made sure that she was able to do, be obedient to what God has told her to do. I'm gonna give you five meanings and what they mean to you or rather what they mean in a harvest season. There's the owner of the field. The owner of the field is the sower. Matthew 20 and one says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. So God uses many aspects of life to ensure that he sows into you the necessary seed that will manifest in the harvest time. So seeds of his word, how? Through your pastor. Amen. Through those who are preaching and teaching and discipling you. Are you taking that seed and are you planting it in the right place? Because God is the owner of the field. He's sowing it into you so that you can go forth. It's not for you to eat it and say, oh, I'm good. I got this. Thank you, God. Woo. He's like, wait a minute, hold up. So let me give you some more seed. Let's see what you do with it. Ooh, I'm gonna keep eating. Ooh, this is good stuff for me. And here I go, I'm getting fat in the word. Yes, Lord. And here comes somebody who's hungry, who needs Jesus. And you're like, oh, poor thing. Wait a minute. Don't feel sorry for them. Use what God gave you. He gave you the seed. Listen, it, it, it's the same thing as angel. God gave me a little seed. I'm going to use what he gave me. I don't know what I'm doing. All I know is that it's, it's like fire. It's like a light up, little lit, lit up bracelet that is just taking over where she works. Because God said, I can use you and I'm going to continue to send people to you because while you are doing what you're doing, I'm setting you up for the harvest because your harvest harvest is going to be much greater than what you even already got. See, what some of y'all don't know is she got a promotion. There you go. But that's not it. That's not the place of your settling. God's going to take you even further because you continue to use that what he has given you and you're going to be able to go beyond and see yourself doing even more. That's not it. That's not it. It's great. It's awesome, but that's not it. So get ready. Get ready. Get ready because you are going to be able to go further into a place. And even you're going to come to a place that you're going to say, I don't even remember getting training here. <laughs> The devil's going to try to trick you to say, uh-uh, you're not adequate. But God is saying you are adequate for the time because I have given you the steps and I have given you what you need to go forth in ministry. And because of your faithfulness and your obedience, he's going to place you in that position. See, that wasn't in my notes. <laughs> so now we get to the overseer of the harvest. The overseer ensures the production will manifest. That overseer watches over the crops, 
guides the crops for reproduction and making sure it flourishes at harvest time. The overseer is your pastor. Your pastor is making sure that every part of you that you have shown in your fruit, the good and the bad, He's saying, I'm giving you overseers so that I can equip you to get you ready for your harvest. Because if your pastor sees the ugly and corrects you, you have to be obedient to receive it and say, God, you, he's seeing what God is seeing. Because sometimes God is talking to you in your ear, but it goes in the ear and out the other. And you're like, ah, that's just me. We chalk it off as that's me. I'm going to keep doing me. But God's like, I don't want you to be you. You need to be an example of me. I, am, I should be overshadowing you. I should be seen through you. And if you keep showing up, God just steps aside and says, go ahead. Do you, baby. And he'll stand right behind you and be like, go ahead, girl. Go ahead, son. Go ahead. When, and then he'll whisper in your ear, are you ready yet? And then you start weeping and crying. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Yes, Lord, I'm ready. He's like, no, you're not. You're just crying because you're guilty. So go on and keep on being you, babe. Go on and keep doing you, babe. And as pastor has preached, it starts with your mouth. Because once you start speaking the negativity and you start speaking, that's me. That's the enemy saying, oh, yeah, you're going to settle because I want you where you are. I want to keep you right there because God's over here and he's saying, I see you. I got you. I know your capabilities, but you're like, I'm still doing me. I'm going to stay where I'm at because I have to put a defense because I'm so tired of everybody trying and everybody this and everybody that. And God is like, but everybody is not you. We got to get to a place of obedience and sitting you down and put God in your chair. Sit in the lap of God and say, God, I want you, daddy. Daddy, I need you, daddy. How many times have you seen little kids sit on my daddy's lap when they are in need, when they are in trouble, or child sit on my daddy's lap? I need you, daddy, to just help me and protect me. I need you, daddy, to just get me to the other side. I need you, daddy, because everybody else is getting on my nerves. I need you, daddy, because I keep getting in the way. So when you get yourself out the way, you're able to see who the overseer is. Overseer. They see over your hurts. They see over the things that you have been through. They see over the other side. They see where you can be, where you can go. And then in the, mid in the middle of the time when it's for you to change and to switch, you stay right there. Or as most of us do, we leave the church and call it church hurt. When it was time for you to change and do what God's called you to do. And then here comes our harvester. Our harvester. We have a harvester. You know, those are the ones that gathers the harvest. And they get it ready to, for the reaper to distribute. Yes, ma'am. I need my harvester. My harvester is supposed to come and gather all the, the harvest and get it ready for the reaper. Because she's like, I got to make sure that every season shouldn't look the same for the reaper. Because the reaper's harvest is going to be big and the meaning. And they're going to be able to have meaning. They're going to have to do what they need to do. And they prepare it and making sure that everything is who needs what. What is, what is, what is full. What needs a few more years. What needs a few more time? Where, where, you know, wait, wait, this needs more water. This needs may, may need a little dirt. Let's see if I gotta pluck some things and take it out and see, hmm. Every season shouldn't look the same. 
meaning your harvest should get bigger and better every season. And so in order for that to happen, your harvester is preparing it for you. Praise God. And then we have our reaper. These are the people that comes and cuts and gets all the things that they need to get prepared, comes on and gets it going, gets all the harvest that is ready to get separated. See, the harvest, the reaper comes and says, look, I'm gonna get this stuff, and what is good, I'm gonna take it so I can give it to the ones that need it, and whatever is good, I'm gonna give it, and I'm gonna be able to prepare it, and I'm gonna be able to harvest it and even get more. And then I'm gonna get rid of those things things that don't look right those things that just look like they a little bit of something those things that just oh my god oh that those things I uh, no, those don't look right I don't want those those are probably just you know just little things here and there those just don't they don't have meaning they not gonna get to where they need to get to so I want something that's flourish and I'm gonna get what I need And then here comes the roofs of us. The roof ones are the gleaners. The gleaner says, wait a minute. I see those little things and I'm gonna get the leftovers because that which is not profitable to harvest because those things to you are meaningless. But to me, it's seed. It's seed that I can plant. It's seed that I'm going to be able to put back in the ground. And I'm going to nourish it. And I'm going to make sure that if whatever I get, I'm going to be able to get bigger and get more. Because it was fruitful to me. See, what you don't know is an acorn turns into a tree. And if you don't like an acorn, he got all the acorns. He said, I'm going to get me some trees because the trees have more. And as Pastor said earlier, as a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, you're going to be able to be stable. You're going to be able to have everything that you need in your time. So are you a gleaner? Are you a reaper or are you a harvester? Sometimes you can be all three and get your glory. God going to still get the glory because everything that he put before you is seed. And everything that you have, even though the reaper has everything that she needs, but she has more and she can give it out. So you can share it and give it to the people that need and give it to the people that have a need if they want to get their harvest. Because they like, I think I'm going to keep this to myself because if I keep this to myself, I want to be able to flourish where God has me. See, now wait a minute. She just did something spiritual that you, I wasn't even in my notes. She gave it all away. She gave it all away. She didn't keep nothing for herself. She didn't keep nothing for herself. much she had she didn't keep nothing for herself that means that God's gonna bless her just like Ruth three times over because you did not keep anything for yourself he's gonna bless you three times over in the in the field he's gonna give you even a field to be able to work he's gonna give you a field he's not gonna give you just the, the just the barley he's gonna give you the field and when you get the field you're gonna take it over because when God gives Gives you something it's not for you to keep so elder Juanita prepare for your field he's 
going to give you a field. He's not just going to give you the harvest. He's going to give you the field. And don't be afraid of it because it's going to be grand and it's going to be big. And if you get afraid of it, then you just connect with somebody that's going to be able to help you so that you can get to the other side of it. Because watch this, 1 Corinthians 3 and 8 says, the one who plants and the one who waters will have one purpose and they each will be rewarded according to their own labor. One plants, one waters, but God provides the increase. Know this, God is not random. He already knows how much he will bless you. But it's all according to your labor. It's all according to what you've worked for. There is blessings for everybody. There's some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And we're not talking about money. We're talking about what have you done? How much work have you put in for your harvest? I'm gonna close with this. <clears throat> John 4, 34 through 38. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say there are still four months and then come to the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. And I'm repeating it again, John 4 and 38. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. I don't think y'all heard that right. It says, I sent you to reap for which you have not labored. Others have labored it and you have entered into your labors. This speaks to those that worked to sow, but didn't make it to the end. Therefore, it is left to someone else to reap the benefits. Be diligent, be watchful, keep working towards your harvest, and don't let anyone else reap your harvest. I want everyone standing. Elder uh, Joseph, I have one more screen up there, right underneath that one. And I want us to declare this together. It's a prayer for us to declare together so that we know what to do in our next occasion. So if we all would pray this together, we're going to read it twice so that we can get it into our system. Yes, Lord. And Miss Angie, God's going to bless you because you are taking a picture of that prayer because that prayer is going to change you. That prayer is going to take you to a place that you never even thought you would be going to because you just a small measure of faith that you have for yourself and for your family. God is saying, I, I have what you need. You asked him for something. I have what you need. But if you would take the time to be with me, I'll reveal it to you and give it to you wholeheartedly. Continually stay in your courage because where you are, it's your courage that will get you to the other side. Stay encouraged. God will lead you and take you where you need to go. <clears throat> so if we pray together, I want us to say it loudly 
and we're going to pray this prayer of faith so that God will just even minister to you in such a way that you may not even understand, but that you'll be able to receive even the more revelation. And in concert, let's pray this together. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, your word is a seed dropped on the road of life. May the devil not steal it from my heart. May it not disappear because I am tested and let it fall away. May it not be cast in thorns of worry and riches of pleasures of my life so that I may bear no fruit. May my heart be the good soil, rich in the word. May I cling to it with an honest and good heart and bear fruit with steadfast endurance. Amen. May you all be blessed. The last thing I want to say is, Pastor had declared this year is a year of resurgence, which is an increase, which means a revival. It's an after period from when there's a little activity. So we are in the resurgence area. God's going to change some things for all of us. And if you're in the right place spiritually, you will get to the other side. Be blessed today. Brother, brother, pastor, go back to that warring music. Not that. Go right back to when you all was in praise. My wife said something that was so prophetic I don't even know how you guys are still standing it's John 438 I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor other men labored and ye are entered into their labors NIV I sent you to reap what you have not worked for others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor I don't think you guys understand the prophecy that has been spoken of what's getting ready to take place in your life I don't know if by the end of this year or by this time next year, your testimony will be, God sent me to harvest what I did not plant. Others worked, and now I'm gonna gather in houses that you didn't build, vineyards that you didn't grow. God said, the plowman it's going to overtake the reaper. You out in the field plowing. But the reaper is going to be you that have done no work at all. I got to say it again so I can get it right. For those that have been in the field. West Minister Jeremy. He came up and he started gleaning. He, he left. He started gleaning from what was left that was good what minister Kwanita did that was good but what's going to take place your harvest you're not going to do nothing all of it's just going to be yours you all God is paying attention to what you're doing now but how he's going to bless you, somebody else is doing the work. And you're going to reap in. Y'all not even listening. I said you're getting ready to reap in. You're getting ready to reap in something that you didn't even sow. It's going to be pressed out, shaking together, running over. The plowman is going to overtake the reaper. Okay, okay, 
Okay, I, we, we might as well go home because y'all don't get it. But God says, I'm going to give you houses that you're getting building, vineyards that you didn't grow. I'm going to give you stuff that you wasn't even praying for. I'm going to send it from the north, the south, the east, and the west. You've been going through this, that, and the other, and thinking that you're going to reap this. God said, what I'm going to give you is not just a glean. You're going to own the whole field. Oh, oh, shut Some of y'all not ready to praise God on that word because you scared of it. But I'm going to give you 60 seconds to get your praise on. Hallelujah. Get your praise on. Some of y'all not dancing, y'all looking. Some of y'all not dancing, you're looking. But if you knew what was getting ready to happen in your life, you crying right now, you upset. But God says, I'm going to set you up. I'm going to set up. It's a set up. It's a set up. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll set you to reap. What you have not worked for. It could be just 10 of y'all. It could be all of y'all. He said, but I'm sending you to reap what you didn't work for. I'm sending you to reap. Find the neighbor. Say, neighbor, your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into your heart. The things that God has prepared for you. Wow. What's the other level of Oh. Hold on. Oh <laughs> well, go ahead, Minister Zelena. Out. <laughs> Yes, God. La salama ma shake it in the bomasi under the bohosha. Let the other bush under the Bahai. All right. Pastor Kim was so prophetic, I don't even know where to start. Good God from glory. Sometimes, let, let, me, let, me, let me say this. We live in a society that want everything to make sense. Theory, theology, everything got to be, you know, two plus two. But when Jesus fed the multitude, he only had two fish and five loaves of bread. The revelation that I just heard from Pastor Kim is, I don't know who this is for, but you're getting ready to walk into a season of miracles. I said, you're getting ready to walk into a season of miracles. Through all the hell you've been through, sometimes it's difficult to even hear what I, the words that are coming out of my mouth. Let me come over here. You getting ready to walk into a season of miracles. This section right here. If you would just praise God for the season that's getting ready to hit your life, your house. Paul! Hey! If you would just praise God for the season. Let's get ready to hit your life right now. Oh! Woo! This section right here. I dare 
at this section right here to lift up your hands and begin to praise the God of your salvation for the miracle that's getting ready to happen. Praise him now. This section right here, I dare you to grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is our season of miracle. This is our season. Now give him praise. And y'all over here, give God your best praise for what's getting ready to take place. Hallelujah. to reap what you have not worked for. Everybody in this place is used to working and making things happen. The Holy Spirit is saying, I'm sending you to reap what you have not worked for. Y'all don't get it. Brother Pastor, they not listening. Others have done the work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Y'all, somebody need to take off in another run on that one. I don't know why y'all, somebody else need to take off on a run. Somebody catch Pastor Kim. I mean, catch her in the spirit. Hope! Take off! Hey, 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 Miracles. Oh. Oh. Yes, God. 